Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So this one's going to be a little bit different compared to some of my other ones, just because I'm still kind of playing with the deck and testing it out to see what works and what doesn't, just because right now the deck kind of is at odds with itself, considering we only have one actual evolution line that is very cohesive with the deck, and the rest of the parts and pieces we're just kind of scraping by based on some of the older support that isn't necessarily the greatest with uh, the new version of uh, Doru Goromon, but it's not bad either. So as far as what the deck is doing, it is fully focused on trying to get up into the BT-16 Doru Goromon and kind of control the field from there because he's going to be able to delete the opponent's Digimon or tamers as long as they're unsuspended he has the collision ability to uh, make the opponent's digimon into blockers and force them to block then he also uh, has uh, some uh, really decent uh, extra aggro potential because when he's deleting another digimon he gets to unsuspend himself so you could either leave him up for a blocker or try to squeeze in some extra damage and uh, all of the uh, abilities that this card is uh, using is what the deck is primarily focused on on. So I'm going to be using uh, the uh, BT-16 Doru Greymon because it's going to allow us to digivolve into our uh, Doru Goromon for free for utilizing uh, the uh, collision mechanic to force the opponent's Digimon to block. Then if we have our Tamer underneath, then we just get to digivolve it into uh, our uh, Doru Greymon for free, which is really nice uh, on trying to be as tempo efficient as possible. Then the tamer that we're going to be using is going to be Kosuke because our Digimon are going to force the opponent's Digimon to block, but that doesn't matter because they're not taking any damage. So his inheritable ability is giving our Digimon blocker and piercing, which uh, synergizes very well with the deck as well as playing with SOC and X antibody Digimon. And then as far as uh, what's actually forcing the opponent to block, that's making that blocker part of the inheritable useful is going to be the BT-16 Darugamon, because uh, this is allowing us to set up our trash with uh, filling up cards that we're ideally going to be reviving off of the Inheritable of Dora Greymon. Then on top of that, uh, he's going to goad the opponent's Digimon into attacking, which is really powerful of an ability. Unfortunately, we don't exactly have Ace Digimon that are good enough for us to warrant playing, but uh, you could think about uh, including a Ace Digimon if you really wanted to. I'm still kind of playing around with it myself to figure out what's actually really useful. But the fact that it's just cycling and goading the opponent's Digimon as long as we have our Tamer underneath when we Digivolve up into him is still really strong. And the collision ability, even on the earlier stages, isn't bad because it helps uh, get rid of problematic low-level Digimon for essentially no actual cost to us other than swinging with our Digimon, which means we won't be able to block it. But we do have ways to be able Able to spawn extra blockers and make it blockers alternatively with uh, the uh, bt9 decks and stuff which is really nice uh, at being able to have those extra lines of play for that added resilience on top of the fact uh, that uh, we do have a, a, a rookie that's going to be helping set up our tamer to enable all of our plays it might not be as good as lugamon but it's still really decent adding some extra protection and speaking of protection that's kind of where I'm settling with the alternative level 5s, where the BT-13 stops us uh, from our DP being reduced and has ways to keep adding cards into our sources, while we also still have one copy of Doro Greymon, which again stops us uh, from having our DP be reduced, which is actually pretty relevant in certain matchups, on top of the fact that he's giving our X antibody security attack plus as an inheritable and shoving a card in himself, and there's no better card to shove in than the uh, BT7 Dorumon just because uh, when cards are going to be added underneath, which we could combo with Mind Link as well, then we're also going to be gaining a memory, and that's why the egg is just going to be Dorumon, because it allows us to do that same type of thing, rewarding us for cards going underneath, while allowing us to draw a card. And then the last rookie for some added cycling, which also could help set up our trash for our revive ability, is uh, going to be the Dorumon for that extra dig potential, because we don't 
don't really have a whole lot of ways to actually be able to search out Kosuke, which is one of the deck's biggest weaknesses and flaws. So as a result, that's why I'm running defensive training as an alternative way to find him. And then we're also going to be running Cool Boy because, well, everything in the deck is basically X antibody, so there's no real reason not to run Cool Boy as one of the cheaper searching tools. Then to kind of just round out the rest of the deck, I'm just going to be running the BT-13 because its inheritable ability is basically the exact same as the BT-16 version, and uh, the fact that it's a 4 cost means that it's an easy card to hard play, so it's not like it's that bad either, and then I'm going to be running a couple of copies of Protoform because, well, it allows us to reuse cards that are in our stack and make our evolutions cheaper, which helps us be more memory efficient, as well as uh, allowing us to uh, try to line up certain plays to utilize Final Zubagon Punch because this is going to be one of the primary cards that's going to be giving our Digimon reboot, so that way we could be as aggressive as humanly possible, along with uh, Security Attack plus one and Blocker, and then with Kosuke, it'll give us Piercing, so we can guarantee that we're going to be dealing a lot of damage, especially since uh, Doru Goromon has the ability to unsuspend, so we could do four checks fairly easily. Then as far as the supporting Mega, that's just going to be the old version of uh, Doru Gorman. I was playing the deck stuff, but the deck stuff really wasn't working out super well. And uh, at least uh, the uh, BT7 uh, Doru Gorman isn't necessarily that bad, especially if the opponent is trying to goad you and you have enough sources underneath. Then you could uh, attack uh, the opponent and then have his when attacking ability delete the Digimon to try to prevent some ace plays which isn't that bad, or if they do have an ace, it's just a really easy card to be able to snipe those aces because ace cards have a lower overall play cost. And then the last card of the deck is just going to be delegated to Death Exmon. It could really be whatever you want, but Death Exmon is still just that good of a card where it's kind of hard not to run him just because he could easily win you certain matchups and uh, steal games out of nowhere that the opponent might not be expecting. So this isn't necessarily like the greatest deck in the world. It does have lots of shortcomings. As I mentioned before, the biggest one is the fact that it kind of just loses to the DP war. And that's kind of where the uh, BT7 Dorogromon comes in because at least it could kind of help in certain matchups uh, when you're going up against highly defensive decks. It does have some not necessarily best flow when it comes to utilizing this card, but it's still not necessarily bad to want to try to utilize. And uh, the deck also does have a problem against obviously source stripping because we care about a lot of our sources and we want to try to capitalize on our sources as much as we can, but when uh, they can kind of but when they can constantly strip our sources, take away our key abilities, it really does make the deck fairly hard to function. On top of just the deck having lots of inconsistencies, the biggest one is just making sure you could try to find Kosuke, because a lot of our searching tools don't necessarily hit him, so he can be the one card that we need to see in order to start our combo train going, but the one card we end up not finding, which does kind of suck. But it's not a bad deck. I don't necessarily think that it's going to be the most meta competitive deck, but it's fine for what it is. And it's still fairly enjoyable when it goes off, but it does have a hard time at times, which is the only unfortunate part. Alright, so we got two Dora Goromons and two Rookies, and Final Zubagon Punch. This isn't the worst hand. I'm gonna keep it just because this deck can sometimes get, like, really bad hands. So, let's see what ends up happening here, because I'm probably going to Digivolve down here and hard play this. Uh, I am going second, so that does give me something to kind of work with. He's probably gonna take the Agumon here. There's no reason not to, unless he's really desperate for the shine, because he could use the Agumon just to raise and start searching. Uh, I found a level 4, that's really good, so I could at least start thinking about doing stuff. Uh, I found the Tamer, so am I just tempted on just hard slamming this Tamer? Probably not right now, I still need to dig a little bit, so I'm just going to play my digging tool. 
Uh, discard, unfortunately, a level 6. And I found more cards, which is not bad. So next turn, I probably would consider either Digivolving or just using Kosuke. But he's probably going to just start trying to go off here. Uh, no Marcus, that's pretty okay. But he does have the Good Shine, which he is taking the Good Shine. I mean, why would you not take the Good Shine? Uh, he probably might have already enough rookies in his hand, so he's going to try to build, uh, which is pretty good for him. Does he hit a Tamer? He does, which is unfortunate for me, and I can't exactly punish this play either, which is the unfortunate part. So I'm not going to raise out my Digimon, and I still have two options available to me, and unfortunately, he's just going to start going Ballistic. So I'm just going to take my security check while I can, uh, and then I'm just going to set up a Kosuke, just because I desperately need that card, and the only thing I'm missing at this point is a level 5, which I could reasonably hit on the dig, because I get 1 for card draw, then I get 1 for uh, Doru uh, Dorugoromon, or Dorumon, Darugamon, god. Names are so hard when they all sound so similar. Uh, then I also get one for Dex, which is fine. Uh, so, like I said, he's just going to go absolutely ham because the free evolution off of Marcus is really stupid and now he's gaining memory for doing so. Uh, Protoform, that's not bad. Uh, Protoform just allows me to make my plays more efficient, which I will always be okay with there's no reason not to especially if it dies i could grab kind of just anything back namely the rookie if i don't have it uh so i'm kind of at this point just forced to raise out which is not super great um because if he doesn't swing with this digimon i could kill it but the fact that he has two marcuses out means that he could just get two free evolutions which is more than my one free evolution. So that kind of sucks. Uh, he's bottom decking the shine because he already has one. He is actually attacking. Cool boy is good. That could help me find what I need, which I did. Thank you. Uh, and then that also gives me more memory when I make my dex play. So I'm pretty much almost all set up here. So let's see what he's going to end off on. He is just going to play an offense. Uh, that's fine. He's taking the memory setter, Marcus. Uh, so I can raise out. Uh, I am going to... Do I mind link here? Because I could mind link, goad his Digimon, force it to attack before he could do anything. So I think I do just mind link here. So that gives me a card draw, and then I could uh, I think I have to X antibody here. Just because it's one memory and it doesn't really matter when, and I'd rather have the memory earlier on. So I get to Digivolve into you for two. Do you see this evolution? Or, no. I, oh, it does see it. Okay. So it does see using the option to evolve gain me that memory. And then I can draw a card. So I will probably discard... I already have rookies in my trash, so I'll probably throw a level 4 in there. That goats is Digimon, which is good. Now I can dex... And then I get to gain a memory and draw a card. And then give one of my Digimon retaliation and blocker. And discard a card to gain a memory. So I have two of these, so I don't need two of them. So I'll just discard that. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? So I could either try to stop my Digimon from having its DP be reduced, which isn't bad. Uh, and then I could always stick this underneath. But do I get that? No, I, so I don't get the free evolution anyway. 
So there's no sense on me utilizing this because he doesn't have anything for me to actually redirect with. Uh, I could obviously do it during his turn. Uh, that is a thought process, but this is probably just fine because I get to set this up. Uh, that puts him to one. Delete his tamer. Go to his Digimon. Delete the Digimon. Uh, have protection from DP reduction. And then spawn a body. Leave him at one. Uh, unfortunately, the way this is going to work... Maybe I should have swung first. Uh, because this is going to put the Marcus back in. The security, which sucks. So, let's go ahead and put a Digivolution source underneath, use, and then let's have it be Doru Greymon, so that way I could just get another, get two Digimon out. Maybe he has enough DP reduction. So, maybe there's an argument for just increasing my DP. Uh, but I think I do just kind of want to try the extra bodies. Uh, do I want to play the tamer out? No, I do not, because there's not really a good way that he's going to be able to delete my Digimon. So he gets to move out. He's going to be forced to swing after gaining all the memory and paying whatever he wants. So is he going to pay for the Marcus? Because the Marcus... Because this is going to swing first, before Marcus. So that's going to get goaded. He's going to swing. His Digimon's going to die. I get two revives. So I first get to unsuspend my Digimon. And then I get two revives. So I'll probably do... A level four. Oh, wait. Do I get a... I can play a Kosuke? Oh... I didn't realize I could actually play him from the trash. So let's go ahead and grab a level 4. Just to get something else out. Kind of be like a little lightning rod. And then this could allow me to play Kosuke from the trash. Which is pretty nice. Just to be able to have an extra Kosuke in case something goes wrong here. Because uh, I do have the Doruman to be able to get out another Kosuke. Which is fine. So, now he's going to try to do some stuff. So, that doesn't play out a Marcus, which is fine. So, what does he do from here? He's going to have to, like, he could swing here. That could go back into his security. He's left with no Marcuses, and my Digimon would be suspended. So, I think I would be forced to let this Marcus go through. Oh, he's just going to attempt to use, uh, he's, he does realize my Digimon can't have its DP be reduced, right? So, that kind of just did nothing, uh, and that doesn't kill this anymore. So, looks like I was correct on that. Uh, I will play out the Kosuke from its Inheritables. Just because Mind Link will give me more value putting him back in. And then I could have Kosuke put in here. Ooh, a Dex. So now we're in some real good territory. So let's Digivolve for free down here. Um, then we are going to... I guess it doesn't matter when I Kosuke. So I'll just Kosuke first because I always forget to do that. So Kosuke could go under here. Uh, gain a memory and draw a card. Another Dex, so I could discard a Dex, or discard a Kosuke. Uh, I could just discard a level 3, that's fine. Uh, gain a memory, draw a card. Ooh, final Zubicon Punch. So I have both of my final Zubicon Punches, so this is really good for me. Uh, I'll just give him Blocker Retail. Um, do I trash a card to gain a memory? Sure. Uh, I don't need... No, I don't need another rookie. And 
So basically all I'm really trying to find is another level six. So I could mine link here, put you underneath, Digivolve up here. I'm only going to use one final Zubagon punch here. So now I get to make my big play. So he's forced to block. Um, I don't have anything to Digivolve with, which is unfortunate. But I get to unsuspend the Digimon, deal two damage, and revive two bodies. So let's go ahead and I don't think I have any other level four. So it's just some rookies. So might as well make it the better rookie. Because they're both 2k DP. So I knew that Marcus was going to come out. I'm bigger, thankfully. I do have reboot, so I could just get two more swings. Uh, I could reasonably swing with this, but I think I'd rather just hold it up and... He does have a memory setter, so I just need to dig for a Digimon, so I might as well just play this. Because he's going to go to 3 anyway, and I found a level 6, which is good. So now I could Digivolve here if I choose to redirect. So I get to place a Digimon underneath. Uh, we are going to put a Rookie underneath, get some more DP. And then I am not going to play out, and he just quits because he doesn't have anything. So that's kind of an example on like how things can just go right when it comes to uh, playing the deck and what the deck is trying to do. So I hope you found this uh, video to be helpful in terms of figuring out what to do with Dorogoromon in the meantime, while we wait for BT17 support to make him even better. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.